At the outset, let me make a very clear statement that the termination did not have anything to do with financial irregularity, corporate malfeasance, or any unbecoming conduct. The reason for the termination is that post-IPO there emerged interpersonal issues and conflicts between the managing director and the rest of the senior management team, including most of the managing director's direct reports. And the board felt that action had to be taken quickly because of three reasons. First, post-IPO, the dynamics of microfinance and the industry have changed. For example, there's a wide number of new players in microfinance, and we felt it was important that SKS, which has a focus on the social dimensions, took a lead role in uh, bringing up the social dimensions of microfinance. In addition, there has been increasing grassroots lack of awareness or misunderstanding of microfinance. The second reason the board took quick action is because SKS is about to launch its second phase of growth, where we're going to be rolling out a couple of new products that we've been piloting. These products relate to secured lending, things like micro-housing, as well as loans against gold. And in order to roll out those new products successfully requires an intimate knowledge of the field, requires a seasoned experience in microfinance. Third and most important, SKS works with 7.3 million poor households across the country. This represents a company that touches about 35 million poor lives across the country. That's 3% of India's population. In light of our mission of trying to help eradicate poverty and trying to bring about financial inclusion, the board felt that it was important to act quickly in this decision. Post IPO, uh, I think that the, the dynamics have changed quite significantly. Number one, you do see many more new entrants in microfinance who come with a different understanding of microfinance than uh, a leader like SKS Microfinance who has blended the social and the commercial very well. And I think that's a new dynamic that we need to come to grips with. Secondly, you do see, and I think the IPO and the publicity around it, raised a lot of awareness among uh, grassroots uh, elements and there has been some level of misunderstanding at the grassroots. Oftentimes, when people first hear about microfinance, it's very difficult to understand interest rates, you know, small bite-sized loans. And in the absence of context, um, oftentimes, you know, local individuals don't fully understand it, and they have certain reactions. In order to dispel, what, to dispel those reactions, those misunderstandings, we need to bring in people who fully understand microfinance. Now, you're, you're nodding your head. So let me give you an example. Cost structure, right? People, people in municipalities who may be hearing about microfinance for the first time don't understand the extraordinarily high cost of delivering a 10,000 rupee loan, 25 kil kilometers into a rural district, and collecting 200 rupee repayments from 7.3 million customers every week. And we need people who have been there and done that so that they can explain to those people who don't understand the high cost of doing microfinance why the cost structure and the pricing is what it is.